Well, you know, I, I equate him to, if you remember, like, early Twister, when he, when he was Tongue Twister, he came out, like, on some 5% of shit and was wearing the African medallions and, you know, the hoop nose mm-hmm. ring and was kicking knowledge. And after that didn't work out for him, he went back to the hood and he kind of was like, I'm just going to make music for my niggas, you know. And that worked a lot yeah. better for him, you know what I mean? So it's kind of along them lines to where it's like, I really don't think a lot of these little niggas was making music to get heard. They was just making it, you know, just for they block type shit. But here's the thing, man. I think that niggas should start trying to, okay, I understand. You trying to make music for your niggas and shit. But I think once your shit starts taking off a certain way, where people start fucking with you, just make your music for your niggas, you need to sneak in some knowledge. Mm-hmm. Like, try to apply both within the album or whatever. You dropping a 16 album project, try to have eight songs, even if the beat is like boom, 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 boom. And niggas like, oh shit, kick some knowledge real quick, even if it's four fucking bars. Because that shit's going to stand out. And I think that they'll honestly even respect it coming from you more because they know you are. He was talking that gangster shit earlier, but now he's talking some real shit as opposed to a nigga who come in the door trying to preach to him. Right, right. Because then they'll feel like, uh, who the fuck is this nigga trying to preach? But if they know you done fucked hoes before too, then they'll probably respect it when you be like, man, stop worrying about them hoes. Go to school. Right. True that. True that. You know what I mean, that, that, that's what I'm coming with on the Recot 3. You know what I mean? I'm trying to kick some shit. Not only the people my age, but... You know what I mean? The youth. You know what I mean? We got little cousins, little brothers, sisters and shit. You know what I mean? We don't want them necessarily to do the same things that we listen to all day. So I think it's just important to at least try to kick it. Whether they're going to throw it out the window or not, I don't know. But at least try. Yeah, that's true. Because, I mean, if, you, if you're if afraid to, to put forth knowledge, then you can't really call yourself a brave nigga in the first place. You know what I mean? You ain't being yourself. You, yeah. you going for what you know works. Right. And at the end of the day, I don't think that anybody who started this shit, it was like, yo, this is my dream to be an artist. That wasn't your dream right there to do what everybody else did. You wanted the world to see what you was talking about. Yeah. And you know, in my eyes, when I look at it, like, you know, you had young kids coming up from Chicago that want to emulate these dudes. And to me, I, I kind of have a different perspective. I look at people like Pitbull and Flo Rida that's getting real money and I'm like okay well if you'll emulate them to get a little money why not emulate them like that's is that selling out to you know emulate people who making millions of dollars around the world as opposed to a nigga who might sell a few dozen CDs on the south side hey man you, you just said it right there man that's perfect nigga cause I know you dropped the bag in front of me and if I wanna just get the bag and get the attention nigga I'm gonna be flow riding my ass off <laughs> I don't give a fuck what the next nigga got to say. I'm going to be on stage dancing and all that shit. Can't even dance. Man, I mean, I'm saying, like, if we if we, if we going to emulate success, let's look at who's really successful. That's all I say, you know. For real, for real. And I think anybody who's a real artist, not even just a rapper, that's their goal anyway. They'll sit there and tell you, like, man, I think I'm about to switch it up and go pop, uh, top 40, this, that, and the third. They want to go to that. They know where it's at, but a lot of people can't even make that switch. Yeah. So I think if you can make that switch, nigga, make that switch. Because this rap shit ain't really all where it's at anyway. Yeah, there ain't a lot of money going around. Nah, not at, not at all. People be lying to y'all. They make it seem like a lot of money going around, but them niggas hurting just like you. Yeah, for real. A lot of that shit is rented and borrowed. What's What's been, how's your interaction been with DJs? Because I know we get a lot of back and forth. I know DJs catch a lot of flack because... Back in the day, DJ's main responsibility was breaking new artists. It was no other real place that new artists got breaks except for, you know, DJs giving them spins. Now people find out about new artists from websites and blog sites and things like that. Where do you think the DJ fits in right now? I think the DJ still fits in the same position he held, but I think since the game done changed and everything done went to the internet, it doesn't allow the artist to get a 50% out that shit you know what i mean at one point it was like the dj was the most important thing like it was you know the slogan respect the dj type shit right so you had to come to the dj and the dj had to fuck with you or you weren't gonna be hurt but now that you can get your own little buzz on i think the dj needs to fall back a little bit on how I, i'm gonna just say big-headed because a lot of djs walk around big-headed like you need me but we need each other just the same yeah Cause an artist can get a buzz, drop a mixtape with no DJ, and still be popping. 
Now, if the DJ want to jump on that, that works for the artist and the DJ. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. But it, you know, to me, I feel like a lot of them niggas be late to the party, man. If you late to the party, you might not get in. And it's a shame, but you know, a lot of Chicago DJs, especially that have stayed locally famous, they could have been DJ Khaled. They could have been, you know, bigger than what they was if they wasn't so focused on their goddamn self. That's because Chicago DJs are some different niggas, man. They almost like gangsters in a radio station. <laughs> you you dealing with the blocks when you go up to Power 92 and WGCI and shit. You got to deal with them like a street nigga. They on that favoritism shit. They trying to get their man on. Right. Or if you coming with that bread, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. See, now that I'm a little older, I kind of understand why people treated me a certain way because... I used to do shit in ways that I didn't see no problem with, but now that I'm older, I look back and be like, yo, niggas probably thought I was crazy. Because we will run up on niggas after the club at 5, 6 in the morning and pull up next to them like we're going to shoot they shit up and be like, yo, I got a CD for you. <laughs> <laughs> man, yeah, hey, man, I didn't, I didn't been on the end of that shit too, man. Like, I, I, didn't, I remember one time I was in uh, Delaware in the radio station and they were talking about they weren't going to play my shit, but I had people from Chicago, you know what I mean? DC, I had a couple different followers call it up to that one radio station like, yo, play Young C, play Young C. It got to the point that they got on the air and it was like, to everybody calling for Young C, we are not playing that. So stop calling. You know what I mean? So I sat back, I'm like, oh, yeah? I remember the next day I went up to that motherfucking station, dog. I ripped down their posters. I was, you know what I mean, all in my feelings and shit. Later on, I kind of realized as, as, as soon as I learned more of the business, like, yeah, I was probably tripping a little bit. Shit don't run like that. You just can't walk up to people's shit and think that they're going to play you because you feel like you hot. But, you know what I mean? But you sometimes you, you got to do it, though. You know, sometimes yeah, yeah. Don't that, that, that's you. what I feel. I, I felt like that, too, because then I felt like when they had the nerve to jump on the radio and be talking all that, we ain't playing no Young C shit. Y'all got me confused with one of these goofy motherfuckers out here. You know what I mean? Who go... Just go for that. No, well, you're going to know at the end of the day, since you could speak me on the radio, they was even rapping my hook to the song that niggas was trying to get played, you know, and making fun of it and shit. Like, all right, we about to see what's so funny. Wow. 